Hello, hello, Mordimer is here and welcome to one more game from Candidates Tournament 2020, the most important tournament this year. And this time I would like to show you the game from round three, uh, where this is the game. And as you see, this is the new way of shaking hands uh, because of the coronavirus. Uh, so enjoy it for a while. And as you already see, we're gonna show the game between Kirill Alexienko, um, the lowest ranked player in this tournament. He's from Russia and he's ranking 2698. So that gave him uh, 39th place in the world. He's only 22 years old, so very young, and he getting the experience in this tournament. And he play as white. And his opponent Jan Nepomniashi, veteran of the um, uh, of the of the chess tournaments on the top level, he's 29 years old, also a Russian, and he's ranking 2700. 74 and that give him the fifth place in the world so definitely one of the strongest players um, in this tournament and he resigned from tata steel chess tournament in uh, january in vegan z uh, because he wanted to prepare uh, for this tournament so let's see what happened on the board and jan nepomniashi play as black so alexienko open with e4 we have e6 so french defense that's the first surprise because the last time when uh, in the candidates tournament uh, french defense was played it was in 2007 13 years ago and now we have it again and more interesting is that last time anybody won with the french defense in candidates tournament was in 1986 in Riga where Yusupov won against Sokov. So definitely very unusual choice of a Nepo. We have d4, d5, knight c3 and bishop b4, Vinaver variation. And what is interesting here now, uh, Vinaver variation is very sharp. Uh, a lot of lines which are double edge and both sides have to be very, very careful. It looks like nothing going on on the board, but at the end, uh, you know, white usually starts to attack on the king side, black counter attack on the queen side, black king also so uh, sometimes go for the short castle, sometimes long castle, sometimes stay in the middle. So um, very interesting opening. We have e5, so main line, c5, a3, kicking the bishop, or uh, usually it's the most popular to just take the knight on c3. This is what Nepo played. We have b takes on c3, and now knight on e7, inviting for the queen on g4 variation. However, Kirill Alexienko play h4, a less popular uh, move, but still uh, very strong. We have queen on c7 and here knight f3. We have b6 by black. So preparing to develop the bishop, bishop would like to go to a6 and exchange with the light square bishop. That's the dream of every French defense player. However, we have bishop on b5, uh, misplacing the bishop. So bishop go to d7, uh, asking if you want to exchange. But of, of course, um, white never want to exchange. Go back usually to d3, but Alexeyenko play bishop on e e2 is less popular line and here we have bishop on a4 so now um, Nepo found something you know where to place the bishop and now bishop can look at the c2 and put some pressure here uh, we have castle by Alexeyenko and knight on d7 and bishop on e3, uh, strengthening the pawn on d4, which is quite important because if black take it, uh, white actually cannot uh, retake with the pawn because queen on c7 is very well placed and is looking on c2 and together with the bishop on a4, uh, they are looking together. That could be a quite nice counterplay for black. Uh, we have h6 by black uh, and here we have rook on a2. So now strengthening c2 which is very very vulnerable like I show you and here knight a5 um, so it's very natural for a black knight to stay on a5 
White of course is not interested in exchanging the dark square bishop for the knight, so we have a bishop on f4, putting the, the bishop on the diagonal with the queen. We have queen on c6 and now rook on b2, moving the rook uh, to the semi-open file. Uh, and a6 by Nepo. And here Alexienko has to decide about the character of the position, how he wants to continue. So he decided to play d takes on c5. And now uh, Nepo said in an interview after actually that was analysis with Kirilenko and some uh, journalists that it doesn't matter if he take b, b takes on c5 or queen on c5, but actually after taking b takes on c5 uh, and bishop on on d3, trying to exchange uh, the, the pawns, he could play uh, bishop on b5, pinning this bishop, uh, rook on e1, and pinning bishop on d3, repairing the structure of pawns uh, of white, uh, that's maybe uh, not the best for black, uh, but exchanging the, you know, uh, light square bishop is always good in French, so c takes on d3, and now black could just castle, queen on c2, rook f on b8, and then rook eb1 and rook b5 and black is totally fine even have a slight advantage here a white can't get anything from this uh, occupying this this open file so uh, th this is quite good for for black but Nepo actually didn't take with the pawn. He take queen on c5, so he want to keep these two pawn um, together. But there is one problem. We have rook on b4 by Alexeyenko, b5 now uh, defending the, the bishop. Uh, but now we have bishop on d3 attacking the knight. Uh, it's uh, black, of course, don't want to, you know, uh, mess up with the pawn structure. That would be a disaster for black. So knight on e7. We have bishop on d2 now. Uh, and here knight on c6 attacking the rook. Uh, and what white can do? White don't need to do anything about this because Magnus Carlsen in studio actually said rook on e1 is, is really good here. And after knight on b4, uh, a takes on b4, queen has to move, so c7, knight on d4, and this bishop is locked on a4 and it's not gonna enter the game. So it looks like, you know, uh, black actually don't have one playing piece. Uh, so that would be the best. Of course, this pawn is, is defended by this rook on a1. However, Alexeyenko play queen on e2 and Magnus Carlsen said very, very strange move, uh, but it's similar purpose, of course, to uh, protect e5. Uh, and here we have knight on b4, like before, a takes on b4, so situation of this bishop is the same. Uh, we have queen on c7 and rook on e1, so uh, pretty similar. And now what are options for black, what to play? So a uh, knight on b6 is recommended by the engine or uh, actually there are many moves. So knight on b6 is one of the ways and then knight on d4 and then g5. And white have to decide what to do here. It's not quite easy uh, because usually white play on the king side and black already advanced something. Definitely black want to uh, castle on the queen side in this structure, uh, bring the rook and play here. So I uh, have to think what to do. F4 would be the answer. Maybe G takes on F4, rook F1, castle, uh, rook F4 and the game could continue here. Uh, but but it's uh, very difficult to, to say how to advance here. Look at these uh, structures here. So first, knight definitely would like to jump on a4 and uh, help to attack on c3. This c3 actually is very, very difficult to attack. Black have only one knight. Uh, and don't have dark square bishop. So uh, this is defendable only by this bishop. Very comfortable situation for white. Uh, also, another option is castle first, but then h5 can be played by white. Uh, knight on b6 could continue in similar fashion and uh, black even can move bishop on e3 because by attacking the, the knight on b6 uh, black can't really take on c3 because they would lose the piece. So uh, for example rook d on g8, uh, bishop on d4 and this bishop could you know work as a pawn here but pretty active pawn because looking at this 
knight and this knight has to do something i'm not sure if, if it's a good idea to jump here um but uh, th that that was possible you know to play however nepo told something different he played knight on b8 and this move is not really great uh, but the idea is like this knight on d4 and knight on c6 so challenge the knight on d4 so that's the idea here and now Alexeyenko um, has the chance to play a really nice move and, and continue with advantage uh, he actually can play knight on c6 exchange on the on the c6 and after queen on c6 then queen on g4 so that's the idea and what black can do the best is is g5 playing very actively uh, h takes on g5 uh, h takes on g5 queen takes on g5 king d7 connecting the rooks uh, rook e3 uh, rook a on g8 and then queen f6 the game can continue here uh, of course this is the the threat so so black has to do something about that's not nothing complicated but white stand much better here and this bishop gonna be you know locked here i think to the end of the game maybe don't even move for forever and if black plays something less active than g5 for example g6 it's not really better queen on f4 is very very strong and black can't just castle because then they would lose uh, two pawns so for example queen on f7 queen on d7 queen g6 two pawns are lost rook dg8 queen h5 and uh, black have problems actually to progress more and uh, white stands even better so uh, queen on c7 could be played prepare the castle now but then queen f6 is even stronger uh, rook on g8 has to be played and now bishop on h6 is possible but bishop on g6 is also even stronger because now black actually can take on f on g6 that would be a suicide queen on e6 and now uh rook is under attack so a king on f8 but now bishop on h6 with check and of course that is the losing uh, rook is coming so uh, definitely not an option and rook on g8 would be um, the strongest move here but still not enough uh, queen on g h6 winning the pawn uh, castle now queen f4 and the game could continue without this pawn uh, also not really great for black so that would be uh, unacceptable so g6 definitely uh, not great this is why uh in this position exchanging the knights would be really really great and remember this pawn structure it looks unpenetrable because how to attack the the pawn especially the pawn on c3 what to do dark square bishop doesn't exist the the knight from where from from here but how to get there this is controlled this is controlled this is controlled uh, impossible this is even controlled so it's impossible to get here so uh Th this is very very strong and solid uh, pawn structure uh, however we have queen on g4 immediately and that's actually the problem because now nepo can exchange the knights on his terms so knight on d4 we have c takes on d4 and now there is no pawn on c3 so that's the problem and now this bishop actually start to be alive and now we have some threats here uh here of course uh, white also have threats so it's double edge uh, situation and it's very very dangerous uh we have g6 actually g5 would be much better because after h takes on g5 and h takes on g5 rook c1 going for to defense so as you see this was uh very important to keep the pawn on c3 uh, and now after castle queen g5 rook d on g8 queen f6 situation is very similar to the one i show you but without the pawn on c3 now this pawn can't of course go back and this rook can't enter the game so easily like before so um very very bad here now 
So uh, g5 definitely good for Nepo, but he play very passive g6. And this position now actually remember, this is 25th move. So both sides still have to make 15 moves to, to time control. Nepo has almost one hour, uh, but Alexeyenko has only 15 minutes for the last 15 moves. So he has to now uh, decide what to do. And he said in the interview that he started to, to think if it's possible to actually sacrifice the bishop on g6. So let's see what would happen if Nepo takes on uh, g6. So F takes on G6, actually white would get a very, very strong, insane attack. Queen on E6 with check, queen on E7. Now queen C6 with check and attack on the rook. So uh, king F7 is the only move. And here Nepo said in interview, because actually it was one man show, it's only him who, who showed the, you know, all the lines and discuss. And he showed everything like, okay, this is this was nothing. So actually I was, I was totally okay here. Uh, if you play something bishop on H6, I, I of course can take it and, and you can take my rook. Everything will be fine here. Queen d5, I also don't worry because king g7 and you can do nothing. So uh, even e6, I, everything calculated, no problem for me. And then Alexeyenko said, okay, but if h5, what then? And then Nepo watched this and uh, okay, okay. So yeah, so okay, this is not good. So I would like to show you this line. Uh, g takes on h5. And now a rook on e3. Of course, this was the threat. To the, the queen can take on g6. This is black, of course, have to take on h5. And now h4 by black. So uh, black actually can, uh, can control g3. So white can't just, you know, check the king uh, from g3. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. Rook f3 anyway, king g7, and now rook f4, so can check from g4, uh, so almost doesn't matter. Rook h on f8 now is the only move, um, and then now make space for the, for the king, so king can go to h8. Uh, we have rook on g4 and king h8, and now here is the problem. As you see, this is... Uh, maybe not very difficult to calculate but now you have to find the move bishop on h6 this is the only winning move and now rook is under attack uh, rook on g8 doesn't work totally that would be uh, very fast uh, you know lose because bishop on g5 with attack on the queen uh, so rook has to take on g5 but then queen on h6 with check uh, queen h7, so looks like everything is fine, but actually queen on g5, uh, now rook on g8 attacking, uh, and seems like black are safe, but actually not. Queen f6 with check, rook g7 and rook h4, now attacking the, the queen and the king, so pinning the queen, uh, and black has nothing to do about that, of course the, the rook is protected by uh, by the queen, so uh, bishop on c2 and simply rook h7, king h7 and now e6 and white is winning. Black will have to sacrifice the, the rook for the pawn and of course a uh, very easy win for white. So definitely not rook um, on g8, that, that would lose very very uh, fast. The problem is the move like rook a on c8 is it's maybe slightly better, but it also doesn't save the game because bishop on f8 now and queen on f8 losing very fast because queen g6 and uh, checkmate is coming on h4 and it cannot be defended. So a uh, rook on c6 and now uh, bishop on e7. Uh, bishop on c2, bishop on h4, and white has two extra pawns uh, in this ending. And of course, uh, this pawn is a pass pawn, so can advance very fast and win the game. So uh, not really an option. So that would be definitely good to take this on g6. Uh, however, Alexeyenko didn't do that, and he was asked about that on the on the press conference, and uh, very interesting material. However, he played h5. He didn't want to calculate all, all of that. So h5, we have g takes on h5, and now queen takes on h5. Uh, and here 
Aleppo just castle. So now the king is, is happy, laughing at the white army and, uh, you know, it's very, very safe. Uh, and to get to the to the king is, is very difficult in French defense, because if you concentrate on the king side, then the, uh, you know, uh, king can jump to the queen side and, uh, and of course, can do it in the opposite uh, manner as well. Uh, here we have f4 by Alexeyenko and um, and now bishop on c2 of course is unplayable because rook on c1 trapping the, the bishop and winning the bishop. Uh, so first king on b8 and here c3. So now pawn on c3 is the new obstacle and of course is, is controlled by this uh, bishop on d2 and of course it cannot be attacked uh, only by the rooks because there are no knights and uh, no bishops so uh, it can be attacked. Uh, but white can free the bishop now. So bishop on b3. Now bishop's gonna be more happy. We have f5. Bishop on c4 challenging the bishop on d3. We have bishop on c2. Uh, rook D on G8. Now uh, it looks like the game gonna be, you know, uh, quite exciting. But actually we have King on F2. And here Nepo has to decide what to do. So definitely these two rooks on the king side are, are quite strong, but not really uh, passive. The queen defends f7, so it's not easy to do anything with that. So the queen probably could come and, and maybe do something, but it could take some time. Uh, Nepo decided a5, uh, so open um, another side um, of the chessboard and try queen to move on the actually from from this side and attack uh, from the from the queen side uh, we have b takes on a5 and here there are two possibilities so uh, king on b7 can be played uh, and after g4 then rook on a1 and attack the, the pawn the problem is after rook on a1 uh, the situation doesn't change much. So uh, Nepo actually play queen on a5 and he led white to play queen on f7, counterplay. So it's very, very double edge. Uh, but here we have queen on a2, queen on e6 and after queen on c2, the players can only agree for a draw because uh, queen on b6, uh, king on c8 and after this couple of moves we just assign the draw because players couldn't agree for a draw before move 40, that's the rule of the tournament. But now we have threefold repetition and of course uh, that's a draw. I know you can be disappointed that it's only a draw but uh, in my opinion very interesting game and with a lot of chances and uh, maybe it can help you to understand the French defense more, how to attack is a, as white, how to defend as black. Uh, for me, very interesting as I am, you know, French uh, defense player. And sometimes uh, I never play a Vina variation, but I see it's also <laughs> very entertaining. And uh, maybe for some people can be <laughs> frustrating, but I really, you know, enjoy uh, this kind of analysis. So if you like this video, if you like French defense, Fans press a like if for some reason and I can understand you you don't like press unlike leave the comment what do you think about this game and of course uh, press subscribe if you don't want to miss uh, content from the candidates tournament 2020 and of course smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one